Hi there, and welcome to Gypsy Studios. I'm Christy Bell, and I will be your instructor today. But before we jump right in, I wanted to offer a little bit of advice and also then go over some of the supplies that you're gonna to need to have ready before we get started. So, advice. Remember that you are learning. This is something new. This is something you're doing for the first time. So give yourself some grace and understand that it takes a lot of practice and patience to learn something new. You don't really just start out being amazing at something. You might start out with an eye, you might start out with some talent, but to really learn how to do something well, you have to hone that skill. So you have to really work at it, you have to really practice, and you have to take those gifts that you have and, and, and put it into practice and learn new ways to use things. So for example, say that I'm like a really great um, pianist. So I play the piano like no other. Like I have such a great, um, I have such great piano playing skills, right? But then if you give me say a violin, I'm probably not gonna know how to do that. So if I try to pick up a violin after having played the piano, I'm gonna play the violin and hear all the sounds that are sounding so wrong and know that all the notes are wrong because I know how the notes should sound because I play the piano. But the thing is, I don't know how to use this new instrument yet. So just try to remember those things that when you're learning something new, even if you've drawn before, even if you've painted with oils before, even if you've painted with watercolors, whatever experience of art you have, know that this is something new if you're learning acrylic painting for the first time or if you're even taking a class for the first time. So remember to give yourself some grace and, and be patient with yourself and know that um, nobody starts out a professional artist. Everybody starts out as an amateur and, and works toward that goal. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is acrylic paint is super forgiving. It's an awesome medium. It's why it's my favorite, honestly, because it is, it is a medium that dries so fast that you can easily paint over things. So say you get something in the wrong spot. So we almost always start with yellow paint and we start with yellow paint because it's the lightest color, it's really easy to cover over. So if you get something in the wrong spot, you don't have to stress about it. You can just draw the right line. So, you know, we drew the drawing with the yellow paint and then when you go in to make a correction, you just make the right one. And you don't have to worry about getting those lines off or anything because we're gonna paint over all of it. So um, that's my biggest advice to you is don't stress. Also, when I tell you don't worry about certain layers, really don't worry about it because a lot of times we're painting over some of those things. And acrylic painting is a lot about building layers. So the more layers you have, um, the richer the painting is going to look. So remember those things. And um, also, <laughs> while I'm at it, acrylic paint dries really fast, which is good for painting and, and, um, and being able to paint on top of and recovering things like that, but it's not so good for your clothes. So if you're wearing clothes that you don't wanna get paint on uh, and have it stay on there forever, you might wanna wear an apron to cover your clothing. Or, uh, or just make sure you're wearing clothes that it's okay if paint gets on there because acrylic paint dries hard and it dries on the fabric and it won't come out. So, um, but occasionally you can, if you go really quick, like if you notice that you got the paint on you right away, if you take that piece of clothing off and go straight to the sink really fast and rinse it out, oftentimes you can save it and you can get the um, paint out. But I just wanna let you know, you have to do it right away. Don't let it sit till the end of your painting and then go try and get it out because you won't be successful. Um, so let's talk about other things you're gonna need for this. For painting with me, you're going to need um, usually three brushes, sometimes less, but um, a big paintbrush, a medium-sized paintbrush, and a small detail paintbrush with a point. Um, can, you can really get almost every painting done with, with these three paintbrushes if you can make that happen. Um, some are just these two, etc. Of course, if you have more paintbrushes, great. Use as many as you want. Um, but I just want to show you that's that's the bare minimum that you need. Another thing is I, I use a palette knife for mixing paint, uh, but you don't need to. I'm going to do most of my videos without it just because I'm assuming that a lot of people don't have all the supplies 
uh, that they might need. So, but you do need something like a butter knife or a paint knife or something if you have uh, paint pots like this to get the paint out of because you can't put your paintbrush in there because you'll start mixing colors and you don't want to do that and contaminate your new paint. So uh, I use a palette knife, butter knife, cheese knife, all sorts of things can work for this. Uh, you also need a water jar with water for rinsing your brushes. And I use a paint rag like this. Uh, this is just an old rag that uh, has now become a paint rag. So if you have like an old cleaning rag or even old shirts that um, you're done with or that have holes in them or something, now you can rip them up and you can use it for this. It's really just to, uh, once, once you're done rinsing a paintbrush, it's just to wipe the paintbrush on here and get the excess paint or water off your brush or to clean your palette knife in between using that. You'll need palette, a palette of some kind. You can use a plate, you can use paper plate, you can use wax paper. I use this palette paper, I love it. It's just basically wax paper on a little, I don't know, cardboard thing. And then you can just tear it off and throw it away, which is nice. I also really like stay wet palettes. That keeps your paint wet. So if you're working on a project uh, and then you want to put it away and come back to it later, your paint will all still be workable. Otherwise the acrylic paint dries hard. Uh, lastly, you're going to need a canvas or a painting surface of some kind. Uh, there's these kinds of canvases that have a profile. This is a thin profile. There's thicker profiles. There's also flat um, palette, or, or sorry, not palette. Um, this is canvas board. Um, so there's those kind. There's, there's all kinds of, there's also uh, canvas paper. You can also get away with just any thick paper. If you have thick paper, you can usually use this. I would just say less water. Uh, when you're rinsing things and make sure you really dry it off on a rag um, or a paper towel, but it's a lot more environmentally friendly to use a rag. I'm gonna tell you in the next slide what paint colors you're going to need and also what uh, paint brushes you'll need to use. So for those, uh, just hold on tight and we'll get you that information in just a second. Okay, thanks. I hope you enjoy and have fun. Alrighty, let's get started. I'm gonna start with my little spatula getting a little bit of this yellow paint onto my palette. You don't need too much of it. We're just using this to get some basic lines. I'm gonna get a little bit more, like this. And then you can wipe your palette knife off. All right, now I'm gonna get my smallest brush, this little um, pointed one. I'm gonna get that wet and then just wipe it on my rag so it doesn't have a ton of excess water on the brush. All right, now, so for this first part, I am gonna start by getting kind of the base. This is like the flower fields um, in the foreground of the tree, okay? So first we're gonna get a little bit of this yellow paint and we're gonna go about a third of the way up ish maybe a little bit below the third so like maybe if this is about thirds or something we'll go about here okay and then just go across and this does not need to be a perfect line you notice mine is not um just enough so you can see it yourself all of these lines we're going to be covering over so you don't have to stress about any of them okay next we're going to do a let's see i think next we'll do our mountain so that we then have the area in between to work with so our, our mountain line our ridge is going to start up here so give yourself a little notch right on the edge there for where the mountain's going to start and you're also going to give yourself a marking on the other side for where it's going to come out the other side so kind of to where you're headed so we're going to go down about a third of the way over here on this side of the canvas. So it's gonna be lower than this point. Okay, so I'm gonna start by going up a little bit and kinda of going down to that point right there. All right. Now we wanna give a decent amount for that mountain to be showing, at least on this side. So I'm gonna start over here getting a little bit of a hill in the background, okay? So I'm gonna go a little bit 
further down over to about here and up down maybe up again and then back down over here okay so just you you don't want to parallel this one so if yours looks exactly the same as this mountain behind it why don't you make another bump somewhere otherwise it'll end up looking too uniform going all the way down and one thing we know about nature is it is not uniform so now over here let's do one that starts about here and then this hill is just going to go like this down oops let me get a little more paint so you can see that like this it's just going to go down and don't worry too much about where it goes down we're going to overlap it in just a second So then over here, we'll go about this point right here, and this one's the one that's going to overlap it. Overlapped. Okay, so now this, so that we know that this one is not the one we're going to be using, I'm just going to go ahead and get a little fresh water and just wipe it. If you have a paper towel nearby, you can kind of use that. I don't, but oh, yes, I do. If you have a paper towel, you can just kind of then wipe it off. There you go, it's like erasing. All right, now we'll get that excess water off. And I'm gonna do one more little hill over here. It's gonna have a little bit more ch -ch -ch -ch, and like this, down into the foreground, okay? So this is just giving us a series of little hills, like the rolling hills in front of the mountain. And these don't have to be perfect by any means or exactly like this or diff it's, you know, they can be um, a variety of different shapes and sizes. So don't worry if, if yours are not exactly the same, it doesn't matter at all, okay? They just need to look kind of like hills coming forward <laughs> eventually. And the way that we're gonna make them look like they're coming toward us is by changing the color. So this one, this area will have the same color tones. This set will have the same color tones. And then this one will have its own color tones. And then same with the foreground. So that's how you make something look like it's further away is simply by changing the color. You kind of dulling color out the further back it goes. And in landscape, you're cooling the color off. So it's a lot about uh, adding blues, blues and purple tones to colors as they go off into the distance. All right, so now we have our basic lines on here, aside from our tree. Our tree is actually going to be the last part, and it's going to freak you guys out. <laughs> Warning. Just so you know. Um, okay, so let's start with our sky. For our sky, we're just going to get a light blue color. So I actually don't need my brush yet. I'm going to need my paint first. So let's go get a decent amount of white, because it's mostly white in the sky. All right, and then, oops, there's a little extra. And then I'm going to get myself a little blue, put that on here as well, maybe a little more. And then I'm going to get a little bit of this phthalo green as well. If you don't have phthalo green, you can, um, you can use a tiny bit of yellow, like a brighter yellow, not this golden yellow. Um, just a primary yellow is good, just not very much, you don't need a ton. Um, the phthalo green just kind of helps it look more turquoisey. You can also just go without anything else. Blue and white, especially ultramarine blue, which is typically kind of close to a primary, is a really pretty color too. So you can just leave that. You don't need much of this phthalo green anyway, just a tiny bit. All right, now we're going to mix. So I'm going to take, let's see, that's not too much. I'm going to take some of my white away from the um, pile here and then I'm just going to get a little bit of blue and a little bit of green oops a little more than that maybe more blue okay and then I'm going to mix this together Let's see what I get It's a pretty color. Uh, maybe I want a little tiny bit more of the green in there. Make it look a little more turquoisey. Because it is getting pretty close to the mountain there. It's not too high up in the sky. 
Right now I'm going to get my biggest brush wet and then wipe it on the rag to um, dry it off most of the way. And then I'm going to start painting in my sky. There's really no right or wrong way to paint the sky, like strokes or direction of the strokes, I mean. So it doesn't really matter too much. Oops. Uh, one thing to know about the sky color, though, is that when it gets closer to the horizon or closer to the um, behind the mountains here, it lightens up. The sky always does that. So I'm just going to get a little bit of extra white and put it in here and a tiny bit of this yellow to kind of warm it up a little bit. And I'm going to add that in here and I'm going to kind of just go into my line here because that line's just for you to see. So as long as you can see your line, you're good. And then you just kind of blend it together with your brush strokes here. There we go. Oh, that part right there. A little too much water. Okay, now I'm going to rinse that brush off. Because I'm going to use it again for this mountain area. Just leave that there. And now I need to get some more colors. So you can mix directly into your sky color. The next part, I'm just going to wipe this off because it needs to be repainted. So I think I need to wait a minute for that. Get a little bit extra. Sometimes if you get too much water, that will happen. So I'm just going to save this aside to repaint that in in just a second. And I'm going to start mixing my mountain color. So I'm going to get just a little bit of red on my palette for this portion. And I'm going to get more blue and a little bit of red here and then a little bit of yellow. Mix all this together. You're wanting kind of like a dusty purplish color. I'm going to get some more red. Yeah, that's pretty. And then potentially a little more yellow. More blue, more red. And then I'm going to get a little more white in there. And the reason I'm adding the yellow, just so you know, so it's a purplish color, but it's not, it's not, um, bright purple, if it was bright purple, it would come to the forward, it would, or it would come to the front. So we're just getting a purple that's kind of neutralized because that's going to make it look like it's in the background of our painting, which it is. Okay, so then we're going to stick this color in here. Make sure your paintbrush is really dry. Mine's not. And this one, when you get close to the edge up here, I would just not get super close. Just leave it a little bit where the yellow is so that you can come in with a smaller brush to get the details. And you can paint a little bit again through this line.
Okay, so now I will leave this one, this brush, and I'm gonna switch to like a middle size brush, like a medium size brush like this one, and I'm gonna finish along the edges here. So if you hold your brush this way where the flat side is at the top, you can kind of get in here a little bit better and get an edge. Right now, All right now, I'm going to go back into my sky right here and just repair that one little area. It looks funny. Maybe I need some more blue in the color now. Yeah, that'll do. All right, now we're going to get into these areas right here. And in order to start moving into these colors, I'm gonna add a few more uh, paint colors to our palette here. So if you don't have these colors, so far I've pretty much used primary colors. If you don't have extra colors, like this extra brown color, this is a burnt sienna or a yellow ochre, uh, you can just use primary colors, and I'll teach you how to get this, this brown. This brown color you can get by mixing any opposite colors. So basically by mixing your three primaries together with a little bit extra red, you can get the, the burnt sienna color. So go ahead and do that if you need to. I'm going to get some of this brown onto my palette. Maybe a little more. Yeah, sure, why not? And then I'm going to get a little bit more of this yellow ochre. And the yellow ochre you can get by your, with your primary yellow. And a little bit of, again, the opposite color, which is purple. This one with red and blue. So you hardly need any when you're mixing those. Um, you're just kind of dulling it a little bit. So if you add the opposite color to any color, you dull it just a little bit, which means it's getting a little bit more brown. Okay, now let's find this brownish color. So basically our color is turning from this purple color, which I actually see I want to fill in one little spot too before I move on. Right in here, you kind of see it coming through the canvas. So if this, this color, um, is still see-through on your canvas and you would like a, to see um, a solid color here, we're not going to add another layer on this. So my suggestion would be to, um, after we're done with this area, go back in, pause the video, go back in and repaint this color one more time. And this color again was just purple, which is blue and red plus white, and then a little bit of this yellow color. Okay, so that's how you got that color. You can remake it again. Um, I'm just going to be mixing right into this color again right now, so it will be gone, so you're going to have to remake it. So I'm going to mix in some brown and some yellow, see what that brings us, Ooh, more yellow. And I'm going to get a decent amount because I'm going to keep adding different colors to it as it comes forward. More yellow. And I'm going to get a little more white. A 
Okay, now one color I forgot to put on here was black, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So I'm gonna get a little black. Black is very strong, so uh, be very sparing with it at first and slowly add it in. Be surprised how quickly your color can turn really dark. Mm, I'm gonna get a little bit more brown. I want the color a little bit darker. A little more brown and a little more black. There we go. That's more like it. Okay, so this is the darkest color you're gonna see on those hills back there. So I'm just gonna kinda put this out there. Actually, that's funny, I put it there. It doesn't need to go there, so I'm not gonna actually put it there. But I'm gonna use my middle brush now, because these are smaller areas. Rinse it and dry it off on our towel really well and get some more paint in here. And I'm going to put these, this color, on these ones, this one and this one. And that's it, not this guy. So ignore that. And you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a little bit of this uh, yellow where you can see it, just so I can see it, just so you can see it, the very top there because the very tops of these hills are gonna be lighter anyway, but if we do all of it in this color, you're not gonna be able to see the difference uh, in your hills. So I'm gonna go down to here, you know, and leave this yellow there, is what I'm saying, so that I'll do this. You don't have to be super um, careful in this area. Uh, you will with the highlights, but not this part. This is just kind of getting the paint on the on the canvas, getting our under layer. You might have to um, pause in between some of these just to wait for things to dry a bit. So like at this part, I'm gonna have to pause and then come back in for the highlight color. Okay, so that's dry-ish. Doesn't have to be perfectly dry to work. Okay, so now I'm going to use this color that I just got, and I'm just gonna add a little bit more yellow to it over here, because you don't need a ton of this. Actually, we will need a color to coat, just kidding. I'm gonna add it in all over here. And you can do this with your palette knife, with your brush, whichever. I'm being a little lazy in using this right now. A little more yellow, and then a little white, not a ton. Yeah, that should be good. Okay, so you just want it to be a little bit of a shade lighter, not a ton lighter than this color. 
So if it's a huge contrast when you go into paint, you probably need to add a little bit of back, a little bit of the darker colors. So a little bit more brown, a little more black until you get to the color you want that's just a little bit lighter. Okay, so now what we're gonna do here is get some highlights. Oh, do I like that color? Eh, you know what? I still want more yellow. And I think I need to get some more. Whoops. That got a little brown in there. Did not wipe that off very well. And then a little more white, maybe. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Our sun is kind of coming from this, uh, what is this, the right-hand side. So we're going to get the tops, for sure the tops of these hills. Okay, this is the most important part, the top. Is for sure so you don't want a dark edge on the top up there you want to go all the way to the edge with this maybe a little over if you need to and then you're going to come down in a couple areas maybe pull it this direction so i like to go down like this you know and then pull back from that line a little bit like this. The thing you want to do is try to make these um, irregular. So you don't want them to be, I'm actually kind of making them strategically sort of where there's some areas that you can sort of see through. But if you notice the shapes that I'm using and, and creating here, they're not um, uniform. They're not the same or repetitive. That's a big deal when you're painting uh, nature because nature is organic and it's not perfectly organized into, you know, rows that are equally spaced and things like that, like man-made things that we create, like vineyards and stuff like that. So you have to really fight against your natural tendency. We're really good at organizing as humans. So you have to fight against that uh, tendency. So I'm just going to go and do this a little bit more here especially right in here again because this is all hit by the sun the top and then I'm gonna do the same thing right in here this part I'm actually gonna add a little fun something some rows so I'll show you how to do that I'm going to go like this, then I'm going to take some go like this to create what looks sort of like rows happening here. Just to add a little bit of interest. Maybe this area has a little more highlights too. Okay, now for this next part, I want to warm the color up a little bit. It's kind of cool, dark brownish. I'm going to add a little bit of red or burnt sienna will work too into this color. Yeah, that's pretty. Okay, so this is going to go in here, in these two spots. So again, I'm going to rinse out my middle brush here, wipe it on the towel to make sure all the excess water is off. And then I'm going to fill this in. And this is the darker color for this area. And this can very easily go into here. You kind of want it to, so it sort of transitions nicely. Feel free to use your bigger brush too, if that's easier. 
but again I'm gonna leave this yellow line there so I know where the edge is. This one doesn't matter as much because you can already see the edge because there's a difference in color. barely have enough here. Probably gonna have to make up a little bit more. Now you're going to need to let it dry again. A little bit. Or you know what, while this is drying, I have a better idea. While that's drying, let's do the darkest color for here, under here, and then we'll go in and do our highlights. So for that color, we're going to need some more paint. So we're going to need black. A decent amount of black because this whole area is going to be really dark. Um, so I might get a little bit more black here. So I love this chromium green. I'm going to use this one, but if you don't have chromium green, you can get the same color with blue and yellow. Um, and I would just add a little bit extra yellow to it um, and then potentially just a tiny bit of red to dull it out. because again, this color is a little bit duller. And I'm gonna get myself extra green because I'm gonna use the green a little bit later too. But you want equal parts green and black for this first portion. Okay. So now I'm gonna get, I'm gonna scoop my green over half of it into my black right here. So I'm gonna do it like this. And you can't really get too dark in this portion. There's gonna be a lot of colors on top of this. You're barely gonna see this real dark color, but it's important that it's there because it makes the lighter colors pop. Okay, so I'm gonna use my biggest brush, make sure it's rinsed out really well, and then dried on my towel. I don't want um, a ton of water on it. Okay, and then you're just going to get this real dark color on here and just lay it in. It does, it's not really all that important where it is except for filling this area. It doesn't have to be super thick or anything like that. This is basically the shadow green underneath our flowers. Oops, didn't want to do that. I'm going to kind of put it in a little bit like this. All right. There we go. Now maybe this is dry for you, mine's not, so I'm gonna pause, let it dry, and then come back to it. 
Okay. So now we're going to do this highlight here and here. It's very similar to what we did back here, but we're going to add a lot more yellow into the color. So let's get some more yellow. I'm going to do this yellow ochre because I love it. I'm just going to put it right here. And that's plenty. And I'm going to get this white. And I'm going to scoop up all that additional color I had in there underneath. If you have a ton of it, you're probably going to need just some of it. You don't need all of it. Uh, we're going to want kind of a nice yellowish. You know what? I'm also going to get some burnt sienna again because I ran out of my paint underneath there. So I do want some of this. I just don't want very much of it. So I'm just going to have what is on my palette knife here. That's pretty. I think I just need some white in it. Just make sure all my paint off that. There, that's really pretty. I like. Right back to my medium brush, rinsing it out, drying it off. And now I'm going to start up here. I'm going to go all along here. And I'm just going to kind of sort of Put this in, kind of make it look sort of like these grassy, dry fields that are around here. And if you do it sort of thin, or um, you're almost laying it in brushy, like uh, what's a good way to explain this? So when the paint kind of comes off your brush, when you're getting low on it, that's a good time to keep working with it. So I like to call it like scrubbing in a color. It's nice when the when it's low. If you don't have or if you have too much, you can always get some paint off on your rag or something and then come back into here to kind of put more. And I'm not going to put too much in here, but I am putting a decent amount. But I still want that dark color to show through. If the dark color doesn't show through at all, you're going to be sorry <laughs> about it. So now I'm going to go in this top, this front one here. And this one's a little bit more. This one's going to be filled in a bit more. But again, I'm doing sort of these wispy things. So you see the, the under color, but not fully. Oops, put some black in there. And one thing I'm noticing in here, I don't think my color was dark enough in there. So I think I'm just going to add a little bit. Yeah, there we go. A tiny bit of black too. Just a tiny bit more in there. You can't you can see through it a little too much there. And you can always do that, go back and forth. That's the beautiful thing about acrylic paint, to be honest. That's why it's my favorite. Okay, there we go. So now is a great time to go back and redo this mountain if you'd like to. So again, the mountain color was white, red and blue, and some yellow. Okay, and I'm really not going to worry about it. 
if if this was my painting and I don't already I didn't already have this painting, I would probably spend a lot more time making sure that this is fully covered, that you can't see the canvas through it. So um, and same thing right in here, like I don't like that you can see that line here. So I would go back in and try and fix some of that. Actually, I might do a little bit of that right now. I can do a little recovery in this area with this brighter color, just in a couple spots right along the top of this hill. I'm just gonna do right where I started going in like this. I'm gonna do some highlights on the top. Yeah, that's kind of nice. There, pretty. Okay. So then go back and do that mountain and then restart. Okay. Now we're back and we're going to start working on our tree, our oak tree. And this is going to be a stressful part, but hopefully not too stressful. Do remember that um, we're going to do this first in light yellow. And if you work sort of fast, you can very easily get it off if you're working on a dry surface. So make sure your painting is dry before we do this part. If it's not dry, dry it and restart the video. Okay, now we're back to do the tree. So I'm going to get some yellow ochre on my canvas or on my palette here. Just extra colors so that I can draw it in. Okay, so I'm going to start with my little baby pointed brush here. I got it wet, wiped it on the towel, and now I'm ready to go. So I'm starting with yellow because it's light and you can cover over it if you need to. So the first thing I'm going to do is find out where the base of my trunk is going to be. I'm going to put mine right about uh, maybe here. Okay, so I'm trying to do it in thirds. So if you think the rule of thirds is always uh, very appealing for the eye. So I'm trying to figure out like where if I divide this side up by three, I want about maybe about like this. So I'm going straight up here and that's the base of my trunk. Okay. Now I'm going to come up and figure out where the top of my tree is going to go. So I want my tree to come up to maybe, honestly, some of it's going to go pretty high. It's so like up to here. So that'll be the highest point. And then my furthest point over this way is going to be right here. And then my furthest point this direction is going to go right here. Okay, so there's my points. Boop, 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 boop. So that's where my tree is going to be. So the majority of the foliage is going to be right there. And my trunk is just going up to here. Okay, so the first part I'm going to do, so I'm going to do one going out this direction. So this is kind of like a two part trunk here. It's not just one solid one. So I'm going to come up this direction and kind of give this sort of angle. Okay. And then this other side is going to go a little bit more straight. It's going to get like this. And then here goes this way and here it goes this way. So I'm branching off like this, like that. And then I probably have something coming out around here to get over there. And let's see, this one is gonna have some tree branches like this. Your tree's gonna look different than mine. They're all gonna look different and that is so okay. One more paint than I wanted. Okay. So now the only thing I want to do here is define where these split. So I'm going to have these split right about here. So this goes this direction. This one goes this direction. All right, and I don't think it needs to be quite that fat. 
So I'm going to show you, do this on this side of the trunk, and then just kind of dab that. Okay. So that's really all you need at this point. Okay, if you want to do a couple extra branches, go for it. You know, do like maybe you have a little guy out here and then maybe this guy goes out here. Whatever you want. So we're going to do some of these branches first. I'm going to probably have some coming even down as far as like here. Okay, so I'm going to now start with my darker colors because I want to get too far into the yellow and then have to like redo this all. So I am going to use black and burnt sienna. So I already told you how to make that burnt sienna. Um, but as a reminder, if you want to do that again, it's going to be all three of your primaries, red, blue and yellow, mostly red. Okay, so burnt sienna plus black. So I already have burnt sienna on there. So I'm actually just going to take this. I think that's about the same amount. Yeah. And I'm just going to mix these two together. It's a real dark color. So the tree trunk is going to be very dark at first. We're going to make it lighter though. Don't worry. So I'm going to use my small brush again, just so I have a little bit more control over it. I'm going to now paint in the tree. I think I like this a little thinner. So the thing you need to remember is most of this you're not going to see. I want to have a couple branches on there. I'm actually making branches because I want a few of them to show. So you can, you know, pick your favorites to show. Just remember to stay within your bounds. Don't go too far out of those. And the way I'm getting these like kind of pointed edges, again, it doesn't really matter um, too much about most of this stuff, but it will be helpful to have some of these branches showing through. The way I'm doing it is I'm kind of pushing into the canvas and then pulling away as I lift, like pull away from the canvas and it comes to a point. I don't love that these connect, but I don't care because I think I want this one to show. So that one's just not going to show because it's going to have um, leaves on it. Just make sure you give yourself enough branches that you can kind of play with.
And see how you still see some of my yellow and stuff? There's going to be leaves all over there, so I'm not even worried about it. Cool. So at this point, your painting should look something like a Halloween painting. <laughs> Looks a little scary at the moment, and that is totally fine because we have no leaves on it. So now I'm going to go in here, and I'm not going to worry too much about these ones out here. I will do some highlights on them, but not a ton. So to get a highlight color, I'm just going to add white into here. And I'm probably going to add more brown and then some yellow. So we have white already. I have yellow. I'm going to need some more brown. So I'm getting myself some more brown. And I'll put that in here. Brown, yellow, white. It's going to be a decent amount of white, really. more yellow. I'm going to get all that yellow actually. And I still need more brown. Maybe a little more brown and a little more yellow. Had a lot of black in there. I have way more of this color that I'm going to need, but that's fine. I'm going to get a little more white. That's nice. Okay, I'll use that color. So we are going to use it on this side of the trunk especially. And I'm gonna leave like a little space here for the dark. Here and just kind of blending it together so you still have the dark. And a new paint on here. So again, you're trying to get most of these, the um, right hand side for sure highlighted and the tops of branches.
Mm, you probably won't have too much highlights in there anyway because most of it's going to be covered by leaves. So I'm just getting some on there just in case you see some of it through there. Okay, done with that portion. Well, maybe get it here. I don't think you'll see that part actually, so won't worry too much. Now what we're going to do is go in and do all the leaves and there are so many. <laughs> so uh, one good thing is we already have our color mix. It's going to be this really dark green color. I may just need to make a little more of it potentially. So it's just going to be green and black. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to need more. There's our real dark green. And I like to use the middle brush for this one more than little baby brush. Uh, and wipe it off, make sure, on your towel. Okay, now, I'll show you my technique here. It's really a lot about moving the direction of your brush. So you're constantly kind of rotating it between like this, like a little, almost like creating rainbows, but like doo -doo 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 -doo, stepping at each step along the way. And um, it's really important that this not be uniform. So you're gonna have all these different directions of leaves. And I'm just dabbing it on there, but lots of different directions. Put this back where it belongs. Make sure to fill in plenty of leaves, but you do want to leave some holes too. So I'm just going to go around here and, and notice that um, my leaves are not just going around. Like a lot of people like to do this kind of thing, like around the branches, but that actually looks really funny. Um, and leaves don't fall like, especially oak leaves there. This is like a trunk portion, you know, and then they have all these little tiny stems that go out. And then there's a bunch of leaves hanging off those in big clumps. So I just go on top of most of the tree trunk. You don't see hardly any of it. Oak trees are very round, so at the top I like to have these kind of rounded leaves. And if you get like different portions of your brush on there too, it helps. And so this is going to be all of your leaves. You're filling in everything you see and then we're going to do highlights on top of it.
I don't know if I really like that leaf right there. I think I'm gonna delete that one. <laughs> I kind of want that little um, V of the tree to be seen. I'm just really trying my best to make this very organic looking and less um, perfect. Like, so right now I'm starting to notice I'm making a pattern here. So I'm going to try and make this one a little bit bigger. So it's less of a pattern. The shape looks different. That helps make more sense. Any spot I see those like little yellow peeps through, I'm just covering. don't love this either up here it's kind of creating a pattern so I might maybe I'll connect this right here and then maybe right in here I don't know if I like that part I, think I might do something like this you can see it on the other side of the tree. I might just do a little bit more here anyway. Don't love this right here either. Kind of like the hanging down here. It's kind of fun. All right. So I'm going to let that dry for a minute while we start to work on some of the flowers in this field here and then we'll go back into the tree and do the highlights. Alright, I have switched out this paper because it needs uh, I needed more space. So I still have my other page um, to the left just in case I need some paint from there. Alright, let's start with getting some new paint on this guy. So first we're gonna need 
green, chromium green. That's probably enough of that. And then I'm going to use some red. And I'm going to get my both yellows here. This yellow and this yellow. And the last thing I'm going to do is get some white. Put the white on the other side, actually. Okay, let's start with green. So I'm going to use our green here, and I'm just adding a tiny bit of white, not too much, just a little bit, and then I'm also going to add a little bit of this yellow to it. Whoops. more white and maybe some more yellow and you guys the fun part about this is like really this can be these can be any colors you want uh, in the foreground here these are just like flowers and stuff I'm going for like a fall look so I'm gonna do some green and then I'm gonna do reds and oranges so uh, and then it will kind of fade into yellow right around here so it'll be um, some rows of flowers ish looking rows kind of like um, and then fading into like yellow that goes the back into the hills and I think those colors are going to look really nice with our green um, oak tree our oak trees kind of stay green here year round so that's what I'm banking on okay so now I'm going to use my middle size brush again rinse it off dry it and this color, I am just going to add in all over here. The thing I want to um, warn you about, you, I, I would say use thick paint here. Like apply it heavily. Don't, if you start running out, get more. And um, leave some of the black showing through. You really don't want to cover everything up. And I'm going to do it sort of like in rows, kind of, just to get some semblance of like some structure, some organization in this. And make sure you go all the way off the edge, that's important. Okay, so see how I'm leaving some space in between? That's because I'm going to have other flower colors in between there. So I'm going to do that, like, let's see, how many? Maybe like four rows. And just try your best to really make it irregular. And that's the easiest way to do that is really just move your paintbrush around a lot and get different parts of the paintbrush stamping.
Yeah, we end up be about four rows. And then back here, this row can be a little bit thinner. I don't know if I'm making it that much thinner, but you'll probably see it a little bit later. Just because it's going further away. Maybe we even just do a little tiny thin, like some lines, just a couple little. Like that, just give the illusion that's like starting to go into the distance. that brush out, mix up some new color. So now I'm going to use my red. I'm just going to get a scoop of that. Put that over here, maybe bigger. And I'm going to use this yellow. Bring it in. Wow, need a lot more of that. Maybe I'll use some of this. A lot more. Whew. Let's do it all. Okay, that's pretty. Now I'm going to add some white to it. Well, maybe I'll start with a little bit of white first. Maybe more red now. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty color. Okay. Here's my next guy. I'm going to rinse this brush off so it doesn't have any green. And one thing you want to be careful of is there's some wet green on here, right? So when you go in here, it's going to start blending a little bit. Try not to blend too much. Try more stamping because if you blend, it's going to turn to brown because these are pretty much opposite colors here. So I'm just going to start laying this in here. Kind of like going in between the screen on top of. The biggest thing is you really don't want to get completely rid of your black. You do want to see some of that showing through. If you get rid of it entirely, you're not going to have any depth. Okay, so now I'm going to do this again in here. And I'm leaving room in here in the center for um, the lighter orangish color I'm going to use. And as you get back with these, with the colors, it's important to go a little bit more, to be a little bit more obvious about getting smaller as it goes back into the distance.
Part of that can mean that your brush strokes too, which I'm noticing I'm doing and I'm just not telling you. <laughs> your brush strokes are a little bit more rounded too. So a little bit more straight across. That's gonna help it look more like they're smaller and potentially flatter. Cause the things, when they go off into the distance, they get a little bit more, um, they start getting horizontal. Okay, and then back here, you're just going to kind of do these little rounded, very similar to what we were doing with the green. Okay, last color. Now, I used more paint than I thought I would on that one, so I'm going to switch, uh, or sorry, get some more paint on my brush. So I'm going to need, I think I'm gonna do some more yellow. Let's see what that does. This, and I'm also gonna do more white. I just want like a lighter orange color. Yeah, that's pretty. Okay. Let's do this guy. Again, I'm drying it off. Okay. Make sure you're going kind of in between some stuff. Make sure to get more paint on your brush regularly because now you're not going to have as much space, which means it's going to start um, getting kind of muddy if you don't, if you start blending stuff, you don't want it to blend. You want the paint to kind of raise, you get some fun texture in there. This is your last one. So make sure to kind of step back from time to time and make sure that you're not creating any patterns or it's looking too standard, you know, or too organized.
And if it starts to get that way, just um, create new little groupings and new clusters. So I'm starting to do my uh, more flat. I don't like this right here. It's like grouped together. I think I'm gonna come in there and break that up a little bit. I don't even remember where I tried to like fix it over there. So, oh, right here. I'll just get some of this green and shove it in there. Okay. So I'm going to do a little bit more of this orangey as it's coming back into here. You definitely want to kind of cover up some of these dark places in the back because you're not going to see that anymore. As it gets further into the distance, the dark really kind of goes away. Oh, shoot. <laughs> All right, handy dandy eraser tool. So I'm mostly going to do this color back here. So the further it goes away, the less of this dark you'll see. So I'm just going to fill it in a little more. And kind of blend it a little in this area. Just a little in here. So it looks like it's kind of starting to go into the background. Now I'm going to get some just pure yellow and start to go back in here with yellow and white. Oops. <laughs> nice. Wipe that off. Sometimes we have some hazards while painting. To do this yellow and then I'm also going to do this yellow. So mostly this, add some of this. So it's not so perfectly bright and then I'm going to add some white to this. Yeah, that's pretty. Maybe a little more white. I want to look kind of like that light sort of hayish color. 
that happens this time. Okay. So I'm going to put this in here, just kind of starting to go up the hill a little bit. And then back in here, kind of use that same dry brush technique I talked about. And I'm also going to add this color into here a little. Blend it. All right, done there. Now the last part is the greenery in the tree. Oh, actually, that's not the last part, I lied. So I'm gonna switch back to this palette, which hopefully you have. If you don't, that's fine. But I am going to add um, a little tiny bit of white to this dark green color that we have. Tiny bit. You don't need much, it's just enough to dull it a little bit. So I'm gonna slowly add it in. And you don't need that much of this color anyway. So you're dulling this color so that it can be the shadow color for trees in the distance. We're just doing a few of these. So I'm gonna use my middle brush And you can also use your baby brush for this if that's easier. Either one works. And I'm just gonna create little oak trees off in the distance. And they're gonna be very um, blob-like. So just kind of rounded shapes with flat bottoms. That's the most important thing is these trees that are far from the distance, you do not see trunks, you just see um, these flat bottoms. So I'm just gonna have it go into this, the bottom of this hill. So you can just do a line, straight line, like that, on the top of that hill. And then you have these rounded blobs that are a little bit irregular. You don't want them to be perfectly rounded. And again, you don't want them to be, um, what's it called? You don't want them to be organized. Okay, so make sure they're somewhat irregular. Then you're not really gonna see much in there. I'm just gonna put that guy behind there. And what you don't want, see how you have these little bumps coming down there? You don't really want that, so I'm just going to use some white or water to get rid of that. Okay. And I'm also going to do one more just over here. Okay, 
that's all. So now I'm going to go in and do the highlights on the tree in the foreground. And then I'm going to dull the color a bit and do some highlights on those trees in the background. So I'm going to move this guy back out of the way. Go back to this palette. And what I'm going to do is get uh, equal parts chromium green oxide, this guy. And uh, this is actually like a raw sienna, yellow ochre, um, whatever you want to call that. So I'm going to do equal parts. Make sure you have enough of this because you will need a decent amount. equal parts so I'm gonna make sure get plenty of that mix this up it's really close to this color but that color I already added white to unfortunately there we go nice oak tree leaf color and again, remember our light source is coming from over here on the right hand side. So I'm going to dry my brush. And my highlights are going to start on the tops of things. This is not, I almost did that, but that's not the foreground tree. So you're getting the tops of the leaves, and you want to leave the underside dark. And think about these as like little clusters. So try and go the tops of these clusters, clumps of trees, and get that area in there. But you see I'm doing the tops and then I'm sort of leaving the left side dark. You want to keep that. You really need to keep your darks or again you're going to lose the depth. We have one more highlight for the, the tree here as well, just so you know. So it'll be a little bit more depth even than what we currently are seeing. Like in this area right here, I'm going to create a little cluster. Same in here. Tops of these trees are gonna definitely be hit by the sun.
fun. Okay, so that's good enough for me. Now I'm gonna take, you don't really need very much of this, I'm just gonna take a little bit off to the side and I'm gonna add a tiny bit of white into it. And I'm gonna add a tiny bit of black. Or not black, just the color, um, the shadow color I used right here, this color. So I'm basically dulling out this bright color. I'm gonna dull it out even more actually, a little bit more dark. I don't want them to be so bright, so far away. So more dark. So just like this other thing, you're gonna go to the top of it, down here, and leave this left-hand side dark and the underneath. So these little, little two same same, so I might just kind of come in here and do something like this to make it a little different. This guy. Okay. Now, in here, I'm just going to add white. So I get my last highlight color. So this color you do not want everywhere. This is going to be certain places. It's reserved for like uh, extra highlights. So I'm going to do things like the very tops of the trees here. It's just to give extra sun to certain spots. So it'll be very, very top. So you see how that instantly makes things like pop forward? So that's the idea. You don't want everything to pop forward. You want certain parts of the tree, especially ones that are in the front. All right. There you have it. 
I think I might go in just a tiny bit with some brown. Kind of just push it in there a little bit. Yeah. Okay, we're finished. I hope you had a great time. If you enjoyed this little tutorial um, and would like to help us be able to make more of them, we do have um, a Venmo and a PayPal that we're accepting donations on. Uh, that information will be on the next slide. And of course, if you do not have the means, we totally get it. But if you do and are in a place that you are able to donate, we will take anything. Thanks so much. We really appreciate uh, all your help and love and support during this time. And we hope this is really helpful and fun and life-giving for you. All right. Thanks.